thank you for being here. Uh, I'm David Chumperlé and uh, today I'm with uh, Jérôme Boulanger and Patrick David uh, to present you some of the stuff we've made uh, last year on, in, um, in the two, two last years um, about the GMIC project. And I suppose that you don't know a lot of, about this project, so uh, my first slides will be about presenting uh, the project a little bit. So basically what it is, is um, it's an image processing framework. So it, um, what it does is it proposes uh, several user interfaces uh, to do image processing operations on your images. And to do this, we have defined a, a specific script language that is focused on the uh, creation of image processing pipelines. So we can write uh, filters uh, in a quite uh, concise and uh, uh, fast way. So uh, let me talk a little bit about the different interfaces. The first interface that we proposed in the GMIC project uh, was the um, a command line interface. So you can see some. Um, you, you can see him, uh, it uh, as a, a friendly companion to. Uh, what image magic and graphic magic uh, propose. And the most used interface actually of the GMIC project is the uh, plugin for GIMP, which propose uh, like 600 uh, image processing effects uh, that you can uh, apply on your images and uh, with a preview and a lot of parameters to play with. And finally, one uh, interface that you may not know, but which is quite cool, and we, we have made this uh, last year, is the uh, GMIC online interface. So it's basically the same as the, the plugin for GIMP, except that you can run it directly from a web browser. Uh, so if you want to have a quick look at some of the filters we have uh, in the GMIC project, you can just go to the, this page. Um, and try some of the filters. And finally, um, oh, not finally, actually, there are two remaining. Uh, there is one interface that is a Qt based interface uh, for the real time uh, webcam, man uh, the real time manipulation of webcam images. Uh, we use it for uh, demonstrations uh, when we need it. And uh, finally, <laughs> this is uh, all. All these, uh, all the GMIC features are also available as a, a, a C++ library. So uh, all the filters I will show you after this slide, you can you can actually uh, integrate them in your own uh, open source program uh, quite easily. And this year, Krita, the Krita team has done one, uh, one of, the, of this integration uh, into a plugin. So maybe if you are a Krita user, you can also try the, some of the GMIC filters. So I will show you, we will show you some filters we, we've done recently. Uh, first, a polygonized filter is a very simple filter that try to um, model your, your input image as a set of uh, triangles of, with the flat colors. And as you see, the number of uh, lines of the filters is, is quite small. And for most of the filters we will present, uh, actually there are very few lines uh, needed to, to, uh, to code them. So this is your input image. This is what you get when you um, you run the, 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 the GMIC plugin for GIMP, and this is what you get after uh, applying the image. If you do some further modifications or, of uh, the result, so of course this was not the same input image, <laughs> but you can do some sharpening, you can add some sharpening effects and create some interesting effect like this, like a folded, folded paper, for instance. Uh, another filter we have uh, done is the Rodilius filter, which is a kind of um, it's a kind of fractalius uh, 
it, it creates an effect like the fractal use effect. I don't know if you are familiar with the fractal use effect, uh, but mainly what it uh, what it does is to create different blur of the image with different orientations, then uh, mix them together. So you have your input image, you call the gimmick plugin, and you get something like this, which which can be quite close to the to what the the, the proprietary proprietary uh, fractal use plugin proposed for Photoshop. So two other example of use. Um, another filter I would like to show is uh, the, the colorized comics filter. So this is a filter we have done for two people. Uh, who are David Revois and Timothée Jit, uh, who are uh, Krita users, and they, they needed to uh, col colorize their comics in a quick way. And to do that, um, this is how the filter works. First, you open your input uh, image, so basically this is uh, black and white uh, line art, and you add a layer with color spots on it. And the filter will try to extrapolate the less color spots in order to fill the entire image. And you can see that it tries to take care of uh, the gaps in your uh, drawing. Another example of use. So, uh, Timothy, if you are in the, this room, thank you for <laughs> thank you for the images. Uh, yes, and this is what you get with the, the few strokes that have been uh, put in the top layer. And um, of course, you can do the same for a, a regular photograph. So, you can use a black and white photograph as an input. Add some color strokes. Uh, on a top layer, and that then get a colorized result. Jérôme, it's your turn. <laughs> so I start by presenting uh, so, so the next filter, uh, which consists in extracting object from uh, a background. So we are we define just a, co a color for the background, and we try to find uh, objects which are different from the background. So here starts. So we have a white background, some object on it. We uh, use the interface to to locate the background, and uh, we can see visually adapt um, the parameter to to get the object we want. Then we have the the result. So it looks the same, but each object is now in dif a different layer, and then. Um, so we can uh, change independently all the position of the object. This is one uh, case, one application. And the other thing is that we can use now the new sprites to uh, to combine them. So using the pack sprite. So what we want to do is to uh, to pack uh, many uh, version of these uh, images at different scale on the position in order to fill uh, area of the image or the whole image. So we start with all the, the sprite, the object we have, we have extracted, for example, or from another source. Then we open the, the, the plugin, and we fill the image with all the fruits. <laughs> so we can also restrict the area we want to uh, to a certain uh, mask, and we define so we define the mask and we fill the mask. So if we look in the detail, we, we see it's uh, quite nice, and. Uh, <laughs> So people get uh, very inspired. I, I saw on the uh, game chat, for example, some very nice results. So next uh, filter is a bit similar, so the but, the, but we, we are constrained with some predefined shapes. And the idea is to, to get some geometrical shapes and to try to pack them and to define the, the shape, uh, the, the color of the shape by the image, the initial image, and uh, the size of the shape by the, the gradient, so the, the detail of the image. So we start with an image, we open the plugin, we adjust all the parameters. We have a preview, so so and here we get uh, the result. So this was also, so I forgot to mention, uh, inspired by the work of an artist, uh, Ben Heine, I guess. And we can change the shapes, and uh, yeah, yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so there are a couple of other filters that uh, implement some also. Confirm the mic. We're recording. Yes. There are some other filters <laughs> that implement some very cool effects as well. Um, this was really a work from David that was looking to update work done um, by Paul F. Harrison originally on the resynthesizer project for in-painting. And it's a patch-based in-painting algorithm uh, where we can take a, a, an input image, for instance, apply a mask around an area that we want to replace an in-paint with, and have an automated result of uh, of two things, uh, and it's a, it's a texture patch based texture uh, replacement and blending. The blending was written uh, specifically by the GMIC team. Uh, of course, other great examples of removing some things that automated and uh, four people to three people. <laughs> Um, and, uh, of course, the denoising filters, of which uh, there are quite a few and um, have been implemented in various means. Uh, all the ones in yellow you see there are different methods for denoising an image. Um, and some of the more interesting ones that we'll look at very quickly is the anisotropic smoothing. I don't know if you can see this very well. There's a, a before and after about mid-image here, uh, left to right. And if you take that same... Um, denoising filter and push the parameters to an extreme, you get some very interesting smoothing results <laughs> against the images and some rather artistic interpretations when you push the parameters very far. And then um, there's a bunch of film emulation filters that I had uh, I'd originally worked on uh, and had built up from a, a combination of, of my own color profiles and, and curves and then some reverse engineering of some other people's curves to arrive at a series of film emulation. Uh, basically, these are uh, uh, color modifications against an image where I can take a base image, for instance, and through the GMIC uh, plugin on GIMP, I have access to lots of different types of um, films. I try to break them down according to the film type as opposed to the process. So you've got like consumer instant films, professional instant films, new and old color negatives, uh, color positive films, which are slides. So you do simple things um, like you see. This is just a uh, single color lookup table being applied against the uh, base image to get an output. And we emulate various different types of film effects. Some of them are very popular these days with a lot of photographers uh, to be applied. Thank you. Um, and I went a little overboard. <laughs> the thing is, once you get started, it's very easy just to make minor tweaks and call it something new, which is really all this is. So there's about 270 different types of film effects. Some of them are the same film, just being applied uh, multiple times. And then I'm done. We have one right. well on the wet slide at the beginning, and then we'll okay. a little bit. You have four minutes for questions. Four minutes for questions. So uh, in conclusion, very quickly, uh, GMIC is really meant to be a generic image processing framework. Um, all the filters that you see that you've seen here, plus the other 400 and some odd filters that are left over that you haven't seen here, um, are all available through the interfaces um, with GMIC. And most importantly, I think, is that it's mostly all been a result of a collaboration with artists directly. So a lot of the filters that you see here were a direct result of conversations that David or others had had with artists looking to do certain things and then approaching the problem as a function of some kind of an artistic effect that was trying to be achieved. So do we have any questions? We've got three minutes for questions. Yes. Wait, wait. <laughs> Basically, since Jimmy is a framework for creating image manipulation operations, uh, can this somehow be integrated into Gaggle in order to provide even more uh, processing capabilities for more programs? Can you answer that up there in that mic? Sure, but I'm going to hand it over to David to answer. Actually, this is one of our goals in the future. So yes, we just need people to help. 
Cool. We have another question? Yes. Um, do you plan to have a uh, some sort of search feature in your user interface to find these filters, perhaps? No. Okay. <laughs> you got me. Uh, I was wondering if it's possible to um, discover this stuff if you're looking for things. Like a lot of this, I would have no clue that any of that was in there. And um, also, uh, the having it pop up in a smallish dialog with a tiny little preview is not so useful. It would be nicer to be able to work on the image itself, maybe have a separate uh, GIMP uh, dialog dock or something when you're in the GIMP using it. Yeah, uh, the problem with working directly on the, the image is the, the time of some filters. I mean, if you, we could do that for the film emulation filter that are very fast, but if you try to uh, create some pack sprites uh, or shape ism uh, rendering, it will take ages. Even of the preview, on the preview, it can take some few seconds. So. I don't. I don't know if that yeah. answer. To so, that. just an, another answer. Gaggle integration would give on canvas preview. Okay. <laughs> well, it didn't, doesn't solve the performance things, but yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, just, I, I would really like to insist on how wonderful it would be to have the search filter interface because I was having a real hard time finding your filters here while trying the software. It yeah. would be really, really good. There, there are actually an ASCII file on the, the server, and then you can <laughs> you can use your your Control F. Uh, <laughs> well, trot, I, trot. I actually think that with the action search in GIMP now, you would find Gaggle operations there. So if Jim, uh, no, 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 Gaggle operation. So, <laughs> so I think that's all we have time for. Next presenter.